Hello, my name is Dr. Corey Eurokis, and I am a clinical pathologist with Zoetis' digital cytology team, and I am on the other side of your imagist, uh, reading your samples for you every day and sometimes well into the night. Um, thank you for attending this series of videos on tips and tricks for improving your cytology samples. And today's episode, we're going to focus on troubleshooting in real time and really illustrate um, some of the problem, cell, problem samples that I've seen on my end and how we're able to fix those. So let's dive right in. First sample of the day is this smear. Um, this is my before. I got this a um, few weeks ago on Imagist and I can already tell it's super, super pink. So from our staining video, we remembered that under staining the sample can, I just can't see the nucleated cells. I see the red cells. Those are my dark pink blotches. And in the background, I know there's nucleated cells there, but I just don't know who they are. So I actually was able to communicate with this clinic over email and in the report too, um, and just say, hey, I see cells there. It looks super cellular, but it is just, it's just too pale. It's too understained. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and restain it and see what happens. So to restain a slide, you can totally do that. You just take off the cover slip, use a little Kim wipe or a very thin tissue to blot gently the oil from there, and then go ahead and you can either go back into solution one and solution two, or the, the eosinophilic, the pink solution, or the basophilic, the blue solution. You can go back into both, or if it's super understained, you can go right back into that purple solution and just start there and do redo your 15 seconds of dips or your 15 seconds of soak or whatever the manufacturer tells you to do and just try it again. And um, we were able to do that with this sample and pay attention to the spread of the sample on this slide, we've got little islands of cells that we can look at. And when we go to this next image, it's the exact same slide, right? It's the exact same distribution, the exact same little islands of cells, but with the restaining, look how beautiful that is. I now have contrast between the red cells. They're kind of a paley orange in the background. And my nucleated cells are a very nice purple blue. So we were able to go from a non-diagnostic understand sample to actually getting a diagnosis of lymphoma for this patient. And we were able to fix this with images in a matter of 45 minutes because we have that real-time conversation going on. So we were able, instead of, you know, three days later learning that, you know, your slides broke or your cells were ruptured, this is something that we can work with in real time and fix it that same day. And you don't have to bring the patient back for an appointment and we can already go ahead and make diagnostic and treatment decisions um, for for these patients and really make a difference in these patients and owners' lives. So this was actually, though the diagnosis was not great. Um, it was least kind of a win for that patient and their family because now we can go ahead and make a treatment plan. Let's look at another example. These before and afters are my absolute favorite. So this one is another from the sample prep video. We talked about you know the pitfalls of doing these drips and drops where you spread the, squirt the sample onto the slide and then just kind of leave it there and don't spread it again for fear of rupturing the cells. Totally get it, but what I get on my end is I get, you know, kind of this. It's it's all squished together. It's kind of schmooey, for lack of a better term. Um, I see that there are nucleated cells here in the background. I put a black square around an image that I captured from Imagist, and it's a nucleated cell, but I don't really know who he is. I don't know if it's a macrophage. Could it be an epithelial cell? I don't know. It's all by himself. And I don't really have a lot of context and the sample is just not spread well enough for me to tell. So I actually communicated with this clinic in the report as well and said, hey, there's nucleated cells here. This very well may be diagnostic, but let's give this another try and let's smear this spread out using our slide over slide technique and see if we can get this sample improved a little bit. And look what we get. Um, we don't have dips and drops. We have a, a sample that was spread really nicely. And what I see is I actually see I've got some inflammatory cells in the background. I've got some neutrophils. And then I have this population of cohesive epithelial cells. So I was able to go from an inconclusive sample to, hey, this looks like an epithelial tumor with some inflammation in the background. In the history, it had been getting larger. Let's go ahead and take this off. And it came back as an apocrine gland adenoma with inflammation, which is so great. So instead of a frustrating inconclusive report, we tweaked the sample prep a little bit and were able to come up with a really lovely diagnostic sample. Let's do one last example. Blood smears. Blood smears are always so tricky. Um, this one, I'm not quite sure what happened with this. It may have gone in the fixative a little early and kind of washed off the whole 
middle section of the blood smear, um, we're kind of missing that nice candle flame, candle flame shape. We don't have a really defined monolayer. We don't have a really defined feathered edge. Um, so what we need to do, I didn't get a CBC either. So what happened is I have a whole bunch of white blood cells that are kind of captured along the edge and they're all squashed together. And I don't know if this is a leukocytosis. Is this a neutrophilia? What's happening here? Um, is the dog anemic? I don't know. All the red cells are missing. I can't tell. So this is something, again, communicated with the clinic. Let's give this another go. We reviewed our blood smear prep techniques, how to do it, um, and asked to please send a CBC in with it so that I could better interpret what's going on. So let's see how they did. Beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a short little candle flame, um, but we do have a defined feathered edge. We have a beautiful monolayer that we can look in. And from my images, I don't have those worry about a leukocytosis anymore because all of my white cells are spread out so nicely. And I was actually able to get a CBC um, as well. So I know that the CBC data was actually normal for this patient, which was fantastic. Um, but this way I was able to actually do a really nice differential, confirm what the CBC said, um, and able to just improve the quality of results on my end for that patient. So I didn't want to overinterpret and say, oh, there may be an inflammatory leukogram, and then potentially put this patient through a whole battery of diagnostics that it may not have needed. So with the CBC and with that candle flame shape, we were really able to give good information and good feedback and good interpretation back for that patient. So these were just three of my favorite kind of before and afters, how we can troubleshoot on the images side, how we can communicate with you and just show the impact of different sample prep and different blood smear techniques and how the samples look like you know, afterwards, once we tweak the sample preparation techniques. So hopefully that's something you can take back to your practice, work with, practice with your samples. And thank you so much for listening.